Now, Marianne, Hi. tell us about you, because you're new to our group. Well, um, first of all, hi to everybody. And I'm here because of Risa um, referring me to Paulette. I am a music teacher um, and an educational consultant, recording artist. I've, I've done a little bit of everything. I've even been an adjunct professor here at USF in Florida. Um, I love teaching middle school. So I used to actually do a a course on music for social consciousness with my eighth graders. And um, that was a lot of fun. So now I'm working either with teachers or little kids. So it was fun to be put back into this direction again. Um, I learned some new stuff myself this week, going through some songs. Um, and uh, an interesting thing is I realized that I actually could sing anything that I wrote for children because I just was banned in China. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do to get banned in China? I, I'm just so bad. Um, well, I've been working with this gentleman in China for over 10 years. I actually was flown to Beijing to work with families and um, children and designing this music online music program to help them learn through music and where they'd also be learning English. And the government okayed the program. Um, so we've been going back and forth for 10 years with all these songs. And then recently with all the stuff going on, China decided that they were shutting down the internet. And over in China, when you're there, the younger generation refer to it as the chinternet and because it is so closely monitored by the government and they've decided that they don't want anything that is in English on the internet. Oh my. Uh, so my music is not allowed to be played anymore. Ah, oh, that's sad. Yeah, that's Chinua, really sad. Chinua's upset. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yep. Maybe you can sing it in Uyghur. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to say Ni Hao Chinwa. Um, <laughs> yeah, I picked up a few little words over there when I was, you know, playing with the families and stuff. But um, it's sad. Well, we would I, get... well, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Are they going to stop teaching English then? Yeah. Oh my. Um, That's a big step. Well, one um, tying into a song that I'm going to sing today. And after I say this, you probably figure out what it is. But I was over in Tiananmen Square and um, they were telling me that no one knows what happened in Tiananmen Square oh. that is like 20 or younger um, yeah. because they don't teach it. Um, so when I was there, I was with a young man who is Turkish um, and he his part of Turkey got annexed by China, but it got annexed after his formal education. So he learned about Tiananmen Square. Um, but he said that if anybody from the government heard him talking about it, he would be punished. Oh my. Yeah. That's... I was trying to discuss it with him while we were there. And I'm like, wow, I go, this is really mind blowing to be standing in Tiananmen Square. And he looked at me, he goes, I I got, I can't talk to you about it. That's really scary. Mm -hmm. that, that is so much a part of what we're doing today. Is we are hoping that we can keep our own country from closing down and closing in. Well, this is, we're coming into our celebration. Our last act is often music. It has been for a number of years. 
Risa Cohen and her husband, and Lingen and their boys usually will perform for us, but they have other things that they have to do this week. And then we are very lucky that Risa put us in touch with Mare. And Mare is, she's very well known. She does stuff and internationally and all over the country. And she's very well known. So we're very lucky to have a celebrity with us, a musician who's going to help us. And this is our 42nd. No, it's not. I lie. <laughs> <laughs> I lie. <laughs> Just to see if you're awake. It's our 24th annual U Toledo Bam Books Week Vigil. Vigil because we have to stay alert. We have to always be mindful of what's going on. And we thank you for participating with us. And if anybody's around when we're done, we'll give away some more gift cards. Well, let's yes, the code, keyword for the previous one. Oh, the keyword for the Malala one. Let's make that one book. I think that'd be a very good one for the Malala one book. The keyword is going to be book. So if you want credit <coughs> from your professors, if you're my student, then you write me a paragraph about what you saw and what you thought. But if you're a student for another professor, if you put the word book on the form, we'll let that professor know you attended. And I think it's time to hear some music. And this is Mayor. So do, do we want to share the screen or to get you larger or? I mean, that's up to you. I'm perfectly fine with being the size I am, but if you want to make it larger, that's up to you. I don't have a tremendously big ego. I'm our June. It's up yeah. to you guys. Oh, you okay? Let me just focus on the viewing. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're big now. I'm big. <laughs> you're as big as you're gonna get our technology. <laughs> oh my goodness, I see myself still as the same size. So oh, okay, I, just change. I'm good. Let me see. Oh, I see. Yeah, we can't seem to get you bigger. What I have is that whoever's talking is big. Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah, focus but, is on the speaker. Right, but when I talk, it doesn't get big, so there. I don't know why. <laughs> I on YouTube, though, it uh, it goes up on YouTube the right way. So whoever is talking. I, it doesn't talking. matter to me. I see Sumitra's name now because she was talking. But that's, that's it. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, anyway, uh, so when I was looking at everything, I was thinking that I, I wanted to try to go, as I do so often, outside the box. Um, and like at first I was thinking about the song Joe Hill um, that uh, Joan Baez, you know, made famous and, you know, go with um, Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger and how they were just, people just hear they sung a song and ban them, they don't even know what the words were. But instead I decided to go in a different direction because as I was looking at the list, I was surprised. Um, I think I'm just gonna play this song first and then in Paulette's spirit, we'll see if anybody could figure out why they thought this song should be banned. It's gonna surprise you. I think this is coming out of left field. I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. Let's have snow and mistletoe and presents by the tree. Christmas Eve, you'll find me where the love light is. I'll be home for Christmas. 
Christmas if only my so why do you think that would be based? It's just a beautiful song, nostalgic. Any ideas? No? No prizes for you. Oh. <laughs> the government didn't want the song to be played because they were afraid that the soldiers would get too sad and it would bring down the morale. Oh, right. But, so the song is no longer banned, but it was banned back during the war when it first came out. And so poor Bing Crosby. Uh, <laughs> but um, it just uh, spoke to me about how people, they will try to manipulate the people to control the emotions, um, which brings me to the next song. And um, this song actually got banned, but because of the emergence of FM radio, they weren't able to enforce the band because all the FM DJs were defying the band and playing it on those stations. And I don't think the government had much control over FM radio yet. So the song made it big. And I was actually at a concert and they played this song when the announcement was made about Nixon resigning. And this is about Kent State. It's Kent State University, they were having a anti-Vietnam War um, protest and the soldiers came in to still the crowd and they wound up shooting and killing four students. Neil Young got a little bit upset about that. Tin soldiers and Nixon coming. We're finally on our own. This summer I hear the drumming. All dead in Ohio. Better get down to it. Soldiers are gunning us down. Should have been gone long ago. What if you knew her and found her dead on the ground? How can you run when you know? <clears throat> Better get down to it. Soldiers are gunning us down. Should have been gone long ago. What if you knew her and found her dead on the ground? How can you run when you know? Oh, when you know, tin soldiers and Nixon coming. We're finally on our own. This summer I hear the drumming. Fall dead in Ohio. Fall dead in Ohio. Fall dead in Ohio. Um, they didn't want that picture of what if you knew her, saw her dead on the ground. It was just too explicit. Um, and so got banned, but the ban didn't work. So then I thought, well, what other way do they ban music? And if I may for a second digress, I was looking at the song Banks of the Ohio. And it has never been banned. And ironically, yesterday I got in my car and a song came on of a version uh, from an Irish band. And if you don't know, The Banks of the Ohio is a song about a man who takes his girlfriend to the Ohio River and tells her, if you don't marry me, I'm going to kill you. And he stabs her. And then he goes home and he feels bad about it. But he told her either marry me, I'm going to kill you. She didn't marry him. So, and, and the song has never been banned. And surprisingly, even Dolly Parton has recorded that song. So sometimes they do protect the First Amendment rights. Uh, 
and for songs that may shouldn't have protection. <clears throat> so another way that they try to ban and control is sexuality. And e even in the 50, like, first of all, Brown Eyed Girl was originally banned because they thought Van Morrison was talking about an interracial relationship, which we all know is <laughs> verboten, um, but also because they were making love in the green grass behind the stadium. But that ban didn't last either. And neither did this one, but it was banned when it first came out. <laughs> Tonight you're mine completely. You give your love so sweetly. Tonight, the light of love is in your eyes. But will you love me tomorrow? Is this our lasting treasure? Or just one moment, pleasure, can I believe the magic of your side? Will you still love me tomorrow? Tonight with words unspoken. You say, I'm the only one. <laughs> Will my heart be broken when the night meets the morning sun? I'd like to know that your love is love I can be sure of. So tell me now, and I won't ask again. Will you still love me tomorrow? Will you still love me tomorrow? Mm -hmm. That was banned because they didn't want girls to start thinking that they should have sex because they felt like it. So those are just my um, three songs I picked out to, from varying perspectives. And um, I'd be curious if you enjoyed my picks. Oh, very much. I thought they were very good. They provide a different approach to looking at the issue, too. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to come from it at a different perspective. Um, sometimes when we're thinking of banning, we, you know, they think of um, politics, mostly. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I wanted to, well, I did throw in there Ohio, but I wanted to another perspective, but then again, I guess it's all politics. It's all about controlling behavior. Yeah, it's amazing how, how people will try to shut down expression if they think that there's some way it's going to get in the way of some agenda of some sort. So I'll be home for Christmas that was a song early in World War II. They would not like that for the morale because they weren't going to be home. And they were trying very hard to get the people in the country all united to fight the war. So I can see how that song would have been banned. I don't agree with it. <laughs> no. No, I, I, I didn't. Mm -mm. 
No. I don't agree with banning songs at all. I think that there's some songs that are a little bit over the line, but I think censorship can be expressed by not purchasing material. Yeah, and there's there's also this. Censorship is when someone tells us we cannot buy it. Personal choice and discretion are when we say, well, I don't wish to buy that. That isn't my cup of tea. And so if it's left at the individual level, then I don't think it's censorship. Unless, of course, there's been some kind of a layer above it where some government or church or organization people respect is calling for it to be banned. Then it becomes censorship. Well, like the Catholic Church banned I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. Yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> you know. Well, they have a list, too, of books that they don't want their followers to read. Mm -hmm. It's called The Index. Mm -hmm. And I think other religions do that, too. And some of the very fundamentalist groups have real problems with reading because they don't want their people exposed to ideas that are not in keeping with their beliefs. So this is a very important contribution there. I really appreciated it.